this presentation, we're going to be talking about a popular indicator called the MACD, or is commonly referred to as the MACD. But before we get started, we always have to put up our disclaimer. And the disclaimer is, today's training is designed to instruct in some of the basics of Metastock in the Downloader program. We will provide some guidelines for using certain features within the software. However, nothing presented in this training is intended as or should be construed to be a recommendation to buy or sell any specific security. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risks inherent in trading. Equus shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. So, the MACD. The MACD was actually created quite a while ago by a gentleman by the name of Gerald Appel. And I think what you'll find with this particular indicator is it is probably one of the most popular technical indicators available in this industry. And what makes it so popular is that it has withstood the test of time. It is a very functional indicator. It is very easy to use. It's very easy to understand. You can apply it to just about any type of market that you can imagine and almost any time frame as well. The MECD actually stands for the Moving Average Convergence Divergence. Since that's quite a mouthful, it's a lot easier just to refer to it as the MACD. And how it actually works is the MACD itself is actually calculated by taking two different exponential moving averages, namely the 12 period and the 26 period, and taking the difference of those two to provide a single line. On top of that line, there is actually another line, which a lot of people refer to as the trigger line, which is actually a nine period exponential moving average of that previous moving average itself. Sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not. So let's take a look at it. In this particular chart that we're looking at, we're looking at a daily chart of Microsoft. And this red area that we're looking at here is actually the MACD itself. And then this blue dotted line that we see overlaid on top of it is actually the trigger line or the moving average of the MACD. There's a number of different ways to actually view this particular type of indicator. Another very popular way to look at it is by just taking the two lines themselves and displaying them as one, the MACD itself is just a solid line with the dotted trigger line laid on top of it. As far as interpreting the actual indicator, there's actually three very popular ways to do it. The first way is actually looking for what we call overbought or oversold levels. And how the indicator interprets or actually finds these types of levels is that the difference or the space between these two lines will actually expand. And when you see that expansion, the idea is, is that when it gets to be overbought or oversold, you'll actually see those lines tightening shortly after that. And what I've done here on this chart is I've actually circled a few different areas where the bands actually got pretty far apart. And then you'll see after each circle, they actually came closer together and in some cases actually crossed shortly after. And again, this actually helps to interpret, or the uh, way to actually interpret this is actually to identify overbought or oversold signals. Another way to actually interpret this particular indicator is to actually look for what are called divergences. This is an example of a divergence of the security itself and the indicator doing two different things at the same time. For example, the indicator of the MACD itself, you'll see that the MACD has actually moved up to a high point here back in the beginning of 2004, made another peak shortly afterwards within the same month, but it was actually lower than the previous point. During that same period of time, the actual security itself made a high back here at the beginning of 2004. It traded off, made another high, which was actually higher than the previous high. By drawing these two lines over the top of it, you'll see that the securities price itself actually was, was higher the second time, but vice versa, the indicator itself was actually lower over that same period of time. That's again called a divergence. And the idea is when you find these types of divergences, it's basically saying that the indicator is not in sync with the actual security itself that it's following. And a lot of times, you'll need to watch out, for example, in this case, for the security to actually trade off after you find a divergence like that. 
Another divergence that we'd look at is actually where the indicator itself is actually making a higher low and the security is making a lower low. So for example, again using the exact same chart, this is a little bit longer time frame. So now we're looking at a time period back here in the, let's see, around the middle of November where the indicator itself came down and made a low and then it came down and made another low here around the end of March but it was actually a higher low but the security itself came down and made a low again at the same period of time in about the middle of November but made a lower low at the end of March so again now this is a divergence where you'd actually be looking to actually buy after you find something like this the third and the most popular way to actually interpret the MACD indicator is actually to simply look for crossing points of the indicator itself. And what you're looking for is a crossing point of the MACD with its actual trigger line. When the MACD, for example, crosses down below its trigger line, that is considered to be a point where, this, where the indicator is considered to be overbought and could possibly uh, indicate a short position or you could actually sell your current positions and vice versa when the actual indicator itself actually crosses above its trigger line this is a point where the actual could be a turning point to the upside where you could possibly buy or go long and you'll see here on the indicator itself I've actually have circled each point where it actually crossed this is actually very easy to interpret now the MACD itself is actually it's since it's made up of moving averages in its calculation a lot of people would consider it a type of trending type of indicator but in reality it actually acts more as an oscillator basically helping to identify turning points in the market or the security that you're actually looking at and when you find a particular area or security where it actually tends to actually range from a higher low point over a certain period of time, MACD does an excellent job of identifying these different turning points. Where it doesn't do such a great job is, for example, when the actual security is actually trading in an area here where it's kind of just bouncing around between two, um, a, between a, a narrower range for per se. And when that happens, you'll see that the indicator will kind of bounce back and forth before it finally gets it right. So to actually see these buy and sell indicators on your chart, if you have the Metastock program, you can actually use a power tool inside the program called the Expert Advisor. The Expert Advisor is located up in the toolbar, and it has its little designation of a, of a gentleman with a top hat on. By clicking on that, you'll actually get a menu that will pop up, and these different Expert Advisors will actually, these are the type of Expert Advisors that you'll see inside your program. There's a number of different expert advisors that come installed with your Metastock program. And the one you're actually going to be looking for, for example, in this case, is called the Equus-MACD. And to attach it to your chart, just click on the Attach button here at the bottom and then close the dialog. And when you do that, you'll see that the actual expert advisor will be attached to your chart, giving you the actual buy and sell signals right on your chart of where the indicator actually crossed, it would be designated there. And in addition to that, you'll also have what's called a ribbon down at the bottom of your chart, also helping to indicate bullish and bearish times. So for example, when this MACD here bought at a low point here around the end of November, you got a buy signal on the MACD, and also the ribbon itself turned green and also is labeled as bullish. So this is a good time to actually be owning or actually purchasing these shares, and then vice versa. When you get a sell signal here, this is a good time to actually sell or possibly go short during that period of time. And again, what you're going to find is, is that the MACD is a very versatile indicator. It can be used on just about any type of market that you can imagine and also on just about any time frame as well. But what you want to do is play around with it and, and apply it to as many different types of charts as, as you can imagine. What I would highly recommend is for anybody who is actually interested in learning more about the MACD is actually refer to Gerald Appel's book called Technical Analysis, Power Tools for Active Investors. And what you're going to find inside here is that the MACD itself 
inside his book, he actually recommends a number of different types of MACDs and different time frames and so forth, and in different ways to also interpret it as well as to help you with your particular trading or your trading style. But again, I think the MACD in combination with this book is a great combination for you to help you with your trading. If you need any more help, please refer to our technical support, and you can either reach them by phone, by calling them directly, you can email them, or you can even chat with them through your Metastock program, uh, available Monday through Friday from 8 to 7 Mountain Standard Time. Thank you very much for taking the time out to view this particular training session. Thank you.